Hi, I'm Tristan. I'm 13 years old. I'm curious. I'm passionate. And I'm sure you are too. Join me on a quest to dig deep and find out new things. Welcome to Youth Voices. Good evening. Welcome to my program. This is your host, Tristan Pang, on Planet FM 104.6. Youth Voices. Good to have you company on a Saturday evening. In today's show, I'll chat at the United Arab Emirates with Shinali Wichasinghi of Sri Lanka. I'll also share with you some inspirational quotes and stories, so here we go. Let's be inspired. The important things in life from academictips.org. A philosophy professor stood before his class with some items on the table in front of him. When the class began, wordlessly, he picked up a very large and empty mayonnaise jar and proceeded to fill it up with rocks a few centimetres in diameter. He then asked the students if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. So the professor then picked up a box of pebbles and poured them into the jar. He shook the jar lightly. The pebbles, of course, rolled into the open areas between the rocks. He then asked the students again if the jar was full. They agreed it was. The professor picked up a box of sand and poured it into the jar. Of course, the sand filled up the remaining open areas of the jar. He then asked once more if the jar was full. The students responded with a united yes. Now, said the professor, I want you to recognise that this jar represents your life. The rocks are the important things, your family, your health and your learning. Things that if everything else was lost and only they remain, your life would still be full. The pebbles are the other things that matter, like your pets, sports and your games. The sand is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand into the jar first, he continued, there's no room for the pebbles or the rocks. The same goes for your life. If you spend all your time and energy on the small stuff, you never have room for the things that are important to you. Pay attention to things that are critical to your happiness. There will always be time to do the small things. Take care of the rocks first, the things that really matter. Set your priorities. The rest is just sand. Let's talk. I met Shanali Wichasinghi a couple of weeks ago at the Sarja Children's Reading Festival in the UAE. She was one of the guests of this prestigious event. Shinali is a Year 11 student studying at the Asian International School in Sri Lanka. Her first book, The Wonderful Box of Stories and Lovely Poems, was published when she was 10, and her second book, Wind and Water, was published a year later when she was 11. She went on writing and won numerous awards for her essays and poems. Shinali is an all-rounded person. She's not only good at writing, but also all academic subjects, swimming, horse riding, art and design. Shinali has a very pleasant personality. She is friendly, polite and kind-hearted. It's really enjoyable when talking to her. I was pleased to talk to her while we were at Sarja, the UAE. Shinali, welcome to my show. Hello. (laughs) I found that I have pretty similar interests as you, academic subjects, swimming, writing and so on and so forth. And this year you're doing nine IGCSEs, which is the Year 11 Cambridge International Exams. So could you please tell us how you manage your time and achieve high constantly with everything? The thing is, when you really like to do something, you will kind of try harder to put them all together. So then you manage to somehow. But the thing is, you have to make a lot of commitments, including like late night ups and maybe cancel a bit of your reading time, your, the time you watch TV. But if you, if you really like it, you manage to cut off your time. And that's important, especially if it's something you aspire to be. Cutting up time, that's not so important like it's your entertainment time is important if you want to go towards a dream or a goal yeah i agree with that so all we have to do is to follow our passions and things yeah so um you started publishing books since you were 10 so that is really amazing i find so you're a very talented writer did you find that this talent when you were very little and will you consider being a writer in the future I really want to be a writer, but sometimes I think I'll do it as a side job because I also like so many other things and it's so hard to find one job that actually covers everything I like because it's a 
conflicts or contrasts. Like, I like art and drawing and stuff. And I also like a bit of physics here and there. And there's no subject that really combines all of that together. So, but, And when I was younger, I used to write a lot because my mom used to help me read a lot of books. And when you read books, I felt like writing because I like to be like the authors I read because I read about all these fairy tales and like Inib Blyton and stuff. They have the Far, Far Away Tree. Yeah. That was one of my favorite books. I still have it and time to time I just go through it just to remember the fact that I read it when I was younger. And the book is like completely, you can't even read it now. It's like the pages are torn. That's, that's how many times I've read it. <laughs> so that's why. So I guess I've been wanting to be a writer since I was quite younger because I used to write on papers and stick them all together and make a book and give it to my mom to read it. So. That's cool, yeah. Um, so now, if someone finds he or she has an interest in writing, how can that person develop this interest and achieve something high like you? Uh, I think the person should really look at their surroundings and observe and probably write everything they feel each day. What I've noticed is writing is also practice, like most things. The more you write, the better you get. It's like anything, like when you swim, the more you swim, the better you get. If you lack that practice, it's difficult. But writing, mainly I think you should read other people's writing because that inspires you a lot and you can help change your writing style and read other people's writing styles and kind of develop your own style because that's the hardest thing to do because there are so many people who write and so many people who draw, so many people doing the same thing. But what you have to do is find your own voice and that's difficult, especially when you read lots of things. Yeah, I agree with you. So practice yeah. makes perfect and also yeah. find your own like side yeah. style and stuff so um, how about on the other hand what happens if um, someone who hates writing how can he or she learn to love writing I think they should read a lot I think most people who don't read is just because you haven't found the right book because reading is one of my favorite things and I think that anyone would like reading if they find the right book for them and when you read more you actually what I've noticed is you feel more like writing because there are so many of my friends who don't really read and I suggested specific books and they started reading and now I know quite a few of them who've actually started writing the little mm, things like yeah. poetry and stuff so I think that's what the main thing for writing if you want to write you have to read so finding the right part of reading and writing yeah. that you like and doing yeah. that so um, now can you read us one of your favorite award-winning poems to us? Yeah, definitely. There's one poem I wrote very recently. I think it's before I actually came here, like three days ago. It's, it, I thought it was more inspirational, which is why I wanted to read it. It says, it starts like this. To everyone, when you wonder as to how she is all that she is, as you hear her voice lilting, a soft flower, a whispering wind, I dare you, I dare you. Look beyond those lashes, look behind the curtains, look into your eyes, you'll see it. The fire that whirls wildly wild, the flames that lick her lashes, you'll see it. That she is un as unyielding as life itself, that she clings to jagged rocks and screams with fervor. As waves crash against her skin, desperate to drag her down, that she is the type whose feet wander across battered roads that no one dares tread. That she is most definitely the kind that would make a raft out of her aspirations, even about the death of these seas. That's lovely. <laughs> um, so could you tell us what's the meaning of this poem and what inspired you to write it? The thing is, what I think is most people, when a person doesn't really speak out or is really quiet, they tend to pull those people down and say that they don't really do much. But in this poem, what I say is even if the person is really quiet, if you see in their eyes that determination and the fact that a person who achieves something is a person who even on the worst times, they make something that will help them stay afloat. Like when I say deadliest seas, what I mean is like the worst times of life. Mm, yeah. If you make a raft, like something to help you stay afloat out of your dreams and your aspirations and your goals, it will help you cross it. That kind yeah, of that's thing. great. So now I have two signature questions. So the first question is, can you tell us three people have influenced you? So our young listeners can also learn from them and why. Um, there's this model, her name is Chantal Winnie, who, is a, who has vitiligo, which is a disease that you have patches on your skin which are white. 
and the singer, and she's a model, which is amazing. I love people who are not scared of being different, and they actually put it forward, and that makes so many people stand up and accept. Because I know so many people who have vitiligo, and they usually they feel very shy, and they don't like going in front of people because their skin has like patches. But I think that's really nice. I actually wrote a story about something like that. A long time ago, and then when I saw that she was a model for Desi Girl, I think that was amazing. Because if you look at all the other models in any other fashion show, they're all like perfect hair and everything, and it's nice to be different. I think that's beautiful in some yeah, way. Yeah, great. So. Yeah. And then, then the other one person who would be very inspiration inspirational to me is my grandfather, because the thing is in Sri Lanka. A few years back, it's very difficult. Like we had the war, we had the world war as well going on at the same time. He remembers the world war as well. And the thing is, our country is quite poor in comparison to lots of other countries, other than Colombo, which is the capital. So he lived in the village, and he had ten other siblings. Wow. Yeah, he had ten other siblings, and his parents couldn't quite afford to send him to school, so he would walk to school, and he would buy books by earning money from working in the crops and stuff like that. So then, what happened is he saved all his money, which is amazing, and he bought a tea factory. And now he does this tea factory really well, and now he's won several awards for it as well, o- overall, like internationally yeah. and stuff. So I think that's very inspirational because he came from somewhere so bad, and that and that should never ever limit someone. No matter where you come from, you can go where you want to. Yes, that's yes, it. that's. And then the other one person is Stephen Hawking, which I think you also really <laughs> yeah. like, because I watch his um. Watch his programs time to time, and I love how the fact that he's disabled and he's one of the best scientists there is. Like, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is that no one should ever let their differences to stop them from doing what they want to do. Because all these people manage to, so that means yeah. every, anyone can do anything. I love yeah, that. Great. So just stand out and yeah, be what you are. Be what you are, not yeah. be afraid of it. So now my final signature question is: Can you share with us something that you have? Heard or read that really inspired you? I read a lot, a lot of books. Yeah. So I think some characters that really inspired me in books is the latest thing in books is the dystopian novels, the teenagers' dystopian okay. novels. And I think the main thing I like about them is the fact that they have such strong female characters, which is amazing. Like when you read about Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games, or if you read about Tris Pryor in Divergent, they're so strong and they make you feel like you can do anything because they they wage wars and suffer from battle scars and stuff like that. So when you read books like that, you feel like you can do. It. I think that's one reason why I really like. Those kind of books because they've started the new thing of making female characters really strong and not just male characters, and I really like that because they're really strong. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for taking your time to be interviewed <laughs> thank today. Thank you for asking me to come here today. It was really delightful talking to Shnali, even under such a noisy and hectic environment at the hotel lobby at Saja. I just didn't take notice of that as I was fully immersed with Shnali's poem and our conversation. We have to follow our passions and dreams, just like Shanali. She has been re- reading lots of books, and then has the inspiration to write. She was not forced, and just naturally followed her passion. With her passion and her talent, I know she will go far. Let's quote. This quote was given to me by my Year Eight English teacher, Mr. Hamish Hudson. Don't stop writing poetry. The dance of subatomic particles and the movement of the heavens. Need beautiful words as well as beautiful equations. We thank you, Shanali Wujasinghe, for the interview. If you want to listen to my previous programs, please go to my website www.quistisfun.org.nz/youthvoices. So for today, that's it from me, Tristan Pang. Thank you for listening. I welcome your feedback and your support of the program. Please write to me on Facebook or email me to youthvoicesnz at gmail dot com. Don't forget to like Youth Voices with Tristan Pang on Facebook. Have a good weekend. Good night, world. Join me again next Saturday at 5:20 p.m. to dig deeper.
or listen anytime online at planetaudio.org.nz slash youthvoices. Youth Voices, 